This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and it costs about $519. And this is the Sony ZV-E1, and it costs about $2,200 with a 20 millimeter F2.8 Viltrox lens on there, which is another 150, bringing this total to $2,350. And in today's video, I wanted to compare this camera against this camera and see which one's better. Now, I'm gonna be honest here, I'm already coming into this with a conclusion drawn already. I mean, of course, the $2,200 full frame camera, the ZV-E1, obviously has to be better. And I'm making this video as much for you guys as I am for myself, because I really do want to keep pushing the Pocket 3 and really find out, is it a good enough camera to use for travel, for BTS shots? Maybe, if you're daring, even as a B camera, or is it really just a beginner camera? So let's start off with talking about the image quality and how far we can push both of these cameras. The Sony ZV-E1 and the DJI Pocket 3 can both record in 10-bit color, which will give you a ton of dynamic range, but the ZV-E1 takes it a step further by being able to encode in 422 color sampling, while the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 can only do 420 color sampling. That difference is pretty significant because it gives you a lot more color information when you're gonna go color grade your log footage. But that's not to take away from the fact that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 can shoot in 10-bit D-Log-M, giving you so much room to play with when it comes to both colors and exposure and dynamic range. Okay, so here's a test I really wanted to run. Some of you out there are probably more advanced and when I talk about 10 bit or 422 or color grading log footage, you're like, yeah, I totally get what he's talking about. Some of you might be trying to figure out which camera you should get first. And you're thinking about something like either a mirrorless camera or something easier like the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. So this test is something I really wanted to see the results of. Right now I'm shooting in auto mode on the Osmo Pocket 3 and in intelligent auto mode on the Z VE1. I'm letting the camera do all the work, exposing the image, doing the white balance, and really, this is a test to see if someone just picked up this camera. They're not that familiar with camera settings and they just wanted to get a good looking image out of the camera. This would be the comparison to make. So I leave the question to you guys in the comment section down below. Let me know which image you like better, just straight out of camera, all in auto mode, all in normal color, the Osmo Pocket 3 or the Sony ZV-E1. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave both cameras in their auto modes while I talk about the next bit, microphones. Both the ZV-E1 and the Osmo Pocket 3 have pretty great internal microphones. As, I mean, as good as they can get for internal microphones. I think they're both pretty serviceable if you're gonna be using it to capture audio from your vacations, vlogs, you name it. The Sony ZV-E1 has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so you can use really any microphone that has a 3.5 millimeter out. And with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, it accepts audio inputs through the USB-C connector. But what I think is really neat about the Osmo Pocket 3 is that if you get the creator combo for just $150 more, not only does it come with a bunch of useful accessories, it also comes with DJI's brand new DJI Mic 2, which is one of my favorite wireless microphones at the moment. And not only that, it just pairs super easily. Just turn it on. And I just got a notification that it's connected and ready for audio input. So now you should be hearing me through the mic too. Next, I wanna do a little bit of a low light comparison. And I feel like this really isn't that fair because we're comparing the Pocket 3 against what is in my opinion, one of the best cameras for low light videography because the ZV-E1 has the same sensor as the A7S III, which has been, the long for the longest time, the best low light camera. The ZV-E1 is currently set to 12,800 ISO. I mean, I have all of the house lights turned off, the windows are closed. The only thing that's really lighting me is this Christmas light, and I have a Colbor light bouncing off the ceiling just to add a teeny bit of fill, so that way this image looks somewhat decent. And on the other hand, the Osmo Pocket 3 is currently set to low light mode and I have the ISO at about 3200. So really kind of looking between these two shots, I'm wondering how grainy is the Pocket 3 footage. I know that in low light mode, I'm pretty sure the Pocket 3 does a little bit of post-processing, doing a little bit of noise reduction and a little bit of sharpening to make the image look better. 
But yeah, here's the ZV-E1, and then here's the Osmo Pocket 3. So let's talk about some of the stuff that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is better at. And obviously one of those is gonna be stabilization. I mean, the camera's literally on a built-in mechanical gimbal. I mean, you could get the same shot if you really wanted to on the ZV-E1 if you wanted to throw it on a gimbal, even a compact one at that, like the Jiyun Crane M3S. But of course, that's gonna make your setup infinitely larger than the compact DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I mean, to be fair, the ZV-E1 does have the new dynamic active stabilization, and it does make this walk and talk type shot a lot less like you're watching an earthquake, but it still really just doesn't compare to the ease and functionality that the Osmo Pocket 3 offers. Plus, the Osmo Pocket 3 also has a feature turned on right now that makes things just so much easier, active track, which keeps me center of frame despite the fact that I am not panning the camera intentionally to keep myself center of frame. So let's talk about that. So let's start off with Sony's auto reframing feature, which crops in digitally and tracks the subject in frame to kind of keep them centered. And again, it mimics that feeling of having a camera operator behind the camera, you know, punching in, following the subject around, which is really neat because if you're a content creator and you film yourself a lot by yourself, then this adds a little bit of that oomph to your videos and makes it a lot less static. But this is really nothing when compared to DJI's Active Track, which does a similar thing, right? It keeps your subject centered, but instead of digitally cropping and zooming in, the gimbal's actually panning and tilting in order to keep your subject centered. One of the limitations of Sony's auto reframing feature is that it's a digital crop. So if I keep going to the right off screen, obviously the camera can't physically turn to keep me in frame and now there's just nothing on screen. Meanwhile, on DJI's Osmo Pocket 3, the active track is 360 degrees. So I can just keep walking around the camera and it's gonna keep me centered no matter where I am. Again, if you're a solo shooter, this is a super useful feature. And I think the point here goes to DJI. And of course, the greatest strength of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is its size and weight. Don't get me wrong, the ZV-E1 is an extremely compact full frame camera. I can throw a camera strap on it, throw a small lens on it, I can carry it with me all day long. But it's just not the same thing. As the name suggests, the Osmo Pocket 3 is, well, pocketable. You can literally put it in your pocket and forget about it. And instead of having a camera on a camera strap constantly dangling against you and bumping against your side, you know, you always go, ah, oh, man, I'm carrying a camera with me. Even no matter how small or lightweight it is, the Osmo Pocket 3 doesn't have that issue. And what is the Sony ZV-E1 better at? Well, just about everything else. I mean, it's an interchangeable lens system. So that means you can go from an ultra wide angle lens to a super telephoto lens where you can shoot wildlife from afar. Not only that, but you'll also be able to use lenses with wider apertures, allowing you to get that shallower depth of field to give you subject separation. And on top of that, even though the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 has phase detect autofocus, it comes nowhere close to how good the AI based autofocus is in the Sony cameras. Like it's just sticky focus. And yes, the Pocket 3's battery life is pretty good. It runs for about two hours and you can extend that even longer with the extension battery grip. But once those run out, you're either gonna need to also carry around a battery bank or you're gonna need to stop recording and plug it into charge. Meanwhile, the ZV-E1 can run anywhere from one to three hours on a single battery. And if you're out of juice, you can always just pop a battery out and put a new one in. And we haven't even talked about all the physical controls that you have on the ZV-E1 to make shooting quicker, especially in time sensitive shooting scenarios. Like let's say you're shooting a wedding or let's say you're capturing a very specific moment in time and you can't be like, hey, give me a sec. Let me change my settings on my touch screen. The ZV-E1 just offers so much more efficiency when it comes to changing settings. Coming into this video, I already had conclusions drawn. Of course, I thought the ZV-E1 was gonna produce some better looking video, and I think it did. But after looking at all the footage, I am very pleasantly surprised at how well the $500 Pocket 3 held up against a full frame sensor mirrorless camera. Yes, it has its weaknesses holding it back from being a serious camera. The touchscreen isn't super reliable, right? If you need to make settings changes, 
fast. The lack of ability to create shallow depth of field will also affect your creative endeavors. And the build quality and durability is definitely something I'm still questioning. How long will the Pocket 3 last? Is it something that'll last like, you know, a year and then the gimbal has issues? Or will it be something that will last for many years, something that you can keep using? But when you focus on the use case of the Pocket 3, using it for personal use like travel or even in professional settings as a BTS camera, getting into small areas, and maybe if you're crazy enough using it as a B cam for your shoots. And what allows you to do all of those things is how good you think the image quality looks. Personally, I think that the footage coming out of the Pocket 3 looks really, really good. I mean, I was shocked by how well the one inch sensor performed. I mean, you're talking about a sensor that is like less than half the size of a full frame sensor. But I'll leave that to you guys in the comment section down below. Based on all the footage you've seen from this video and maybe from other people's videos, what do you guys think of the Pocket 3's video quality, especially when compared to more professional cameras? All right, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you wanna watch another video of mine, check out this one. YouTube thinks that you'll really like it. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.